Advanced marine propulsion. Is it really advanced? Hello everybody, I am Nick the Naval Architect, and today I'm going to be reacting to a video that highlights some advanced marine propulsion systems. As always, the purpose is not to criticize these videos, but to show the technical perspective and technical reactions to what is usually a vendor sales pitch. So let's get into this and see what we can discover. Why do all sales videos have this super upbeat rock music to get you super excited? Am I going to a party or am I looking at a vendor brochure? So Lieber is showing us that they have a lot of electric capabilities in this video. The electric bow thruster I really love. In the older days, we didn't have electric motors that were that readily available for bow thrusters. And so you needed to put a whole separate combustion engine up at the bow uh, just to supply the bow thruster. And that's a real pain because now I have to supply fuel to the bow. I have to supply cooling water. I have to supply exhaust from the bow. Uh, I have to worry about the fire hazards of that internal combustion engine. It's really requiring me to create a whole separate uh, engine room right up at the bow. And that can be a real pain. I much prefer this concept where we have the electric motor driving the bow thruster and we keep all of the combustion engines focused in one area of the ship, which is really much better for minimizing fire risks. One thing they're showing here that I like is you notice there are four separate combustion engines with four separate generators. That's one of the flexibilities that you get with uh, electric systems is you don't necessarily need to pick your engines based upon the number of propellers. And that's very important because the size of your engine can often become a limiting issue when designing vessels. A large medium speed diesel will normally take up two decks worth of head height. And that's a real problem if I am, say, trying to fit an engine room into a ship that has a very shallow depth. I actually have had cases in the past where the size of the engine and the height of the engine actually drove the requirements for the depth of the hull. We had to make the entire hull larger just to get enough headroom in there for the engine. I really like this as an alternative option where if we go to diesel electric, we can put in more engines with each one of them being smaller, supplying a generator, and that gives me a different way to fit the engine in without altering the rest of the vessel design. You need the frequency converter systems for reasons to deal with AC power. That is one thing, is that if you're talking an electric propulsion system, you can expect that there will be a large electrical switchboard that's composed of cabinets, like the one you're seeing right here. These are full head height cabinets. They run floor to ceiling usually, or a little bit short of it. So if we're doing diesel electric propulsion, we're going to create a whole separate room just for all of the electrical switchboards. Energy storage unit. Most often that will be a battery, a chemical battery. This is one of the most successful methods that I've seen so far for doing uh, electric propulsion on larger ships is we're not actually doing electric where we just use pure batteries. It's always a hybrid system. And the main advantage here is that the diesel engines are still providing the power. But we've discovered over the years that there are a lot of operational circumstances where your diesel engines are falling far short of their expected efficiency 
because we're not running them at their perfect operating conditions. We're throttling up and accelerating, or we're operating at less than half throttle. These things all alter and reduce the efficiency of the diesel engine. Here's where the electric energy storage unit comes in. One of the common things, say I'm suddenly accelerating my en engines, trying to get a big burst of thrust. Now, if the engines alone have to handle providing that sudden burst of extra power, they're going to be gulping extra fuel suddenly, and their efficiency is just going to plummet. Instead, we have this energy storage unit that that unit provides the burst of energy, and the diesel engines keep running at a, a constant or nearly constant speed, and they only slowly adjust to provide the new power demands. And so having this separate energy storage unit is a great way to improve the overall efficiency because we are allowing the diesel engines to maintain their peak operating conditions. So I'm not sure if those electric motors are actually at the appropriate scale. They look a little small for me compared to the uh, size of the propeller that they're driving. Normally those motors will be a little bit larger. These are motors that can be the size of a person. One other thing that I like here is that they're not showing the electric motors directly in line with the propeller shaft. That might just be pretty graphics on their part, but I'm taking it to mean that they're assuming there is a gearbox between the electric motor and the propeller. That really is a nice feature because one of the challenges we face sometimes is that electric motors do not always provide the same level of torque as a diesel engine for equivalent size. And it's sometimes a challenge to get enough torque out of the electric motor. And this is where a gearbox comes in really, really handy, is we can have the electric motor running at lower torque but higher RPM, it goes through the gearbox, and that allows us to design the propeller demands and the, the electric motor demands separately. The gearbox bridges the gap between the two of them. One of the things we're seeing here is that Libre is showing how they can provide all of the equipment for you and help with system integration. That, I find, is a pretty nice time saver. It reduces the amount of back and forth discussion between the electrical engineers and the vendors. The less systems that you have to combine together, the better your chances of getting a successful startup the first time. One thing they said was the possibility of setting up semi-redundant system architectures. What they're talking about there is that, say, if your engines go down, you don't want to suddenly lose all propulsion capabilities. And so a lot of the times with our electric systems, we'll set up redundant power links and failover capability. In this way, you have to lose several major components of your electric system before you completely lose power and vessel control and redundancy is always a wonderful thing on a ship. You, you need an edge, something to help your ship do more. DMS focuses on engineering solutions that will enable a small business to differentiate itself. So check out the website and learn how we can make your ship stand out from the crowd. Let's do something amazing. Thanks very much.